Hey there everybody, Mike Delicio with another solo mode review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the solo mode for Deep Blue from designers Daniel Peterson and Asker Granerud and publisher Days of Wonder. Deep Blue is a game that was released without any solo rules in the box. It's a underwater diving for buried treasure game where you're trying to gather as many victory points through, primarily through a push your luck mechanic. After a while, Days of Wonder released a new scenario called The Captain Returns that allows you to play from one to three players. So you can play this purely as a solo game, which is what I'm going to be talking about. Or you can incorporate this new scenario into even a multiplayer game of up to three players. So let's head over to the table. I'll show you a little bit of how the solo variant plays, and then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, here we have a setup for a solo game of Deep Blue, and this is using the Captain Returns scenario, which is something that Days of Wonder has recently released on their website. You can go ahead and print it out, and it explains what you need to know to play a single player game of Deep Blue. And there's very few changes as far as components. One thing that you may notice is that I'm going to be playing as purple, the Calypso. I've got both of my starting boats out there, and there's one boat of every other player, uh, of every other color, I should say, that's going to be your opponents. You are basically trying to get more points than every other boat, which is the captain. And this is a deck that has been set up for the AI captain. And the way this has worked is that you get every other color, the blue orange or red, green and yellow, and you take all the propeller cards from those colors and you take as many, you get rid of all of the silver cards. So you've got the propeller cards from all the other colors, all the silver cards have been removed. And depending on the number of gold cards, that's gonna be your difficulty. The more gold cards you leave in this deck, the easier. They recommend for your first game adding two of them and it doesn't matter the color. Uh, so right now I've got this deck set up in that first game difficulty. So there are two gold cards from different colors in that deck and everything else are propeller cards. So a human player is always a starting player and you're gonna take your turn as per normal. So let's say I wanted to sail and I were to go ahead and play this propeller card here and I move well, let's say I played a two propeller card. Let's say I played this two propeller card and I moved one here and one here and I chose to go on to this spot and this spot, okay? That would be my turn. I basically took my, took my sail action and I'm good to go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn over two cards and resolve them one at a time for the AI, and this is their treasure chest, this is my treasure chest, okay? So, I flip over the first card, and it is an orange two propeller. So what they're gonna do is that orange card is going to sail, because if they were on a rectile already, that propeller card would trigger a dive, but since it's not, it's going to sail. Now, it can go up to two, but it has a priority, all right? So it's gonna, it's gonna look for a priority. If two wrecks are equally close, and in this case we have two wrecks that are one space away, even though they can move two, they're gonna be looking for the closest rectile always. So it's gonna be one of those two. If there was one face down, that would be its priority, but they're both face up. Then it's gonna be the highest wreck victory points. And here you can see three victory points. So orange is gonna to move to this tile and it's gonna take the spot uh, counterclockwise from the buoy, all right? So it's gonna, it's gonna try to, or uh, yes, counterclockwise. So it's gonna go right here into that blue spot. If I had been to the blue spot, it would have moved to this gold spot, okay? So that was the first card. If another orange card happens to come up here, another orange propeller, I should say, this will be a dive. It's not, it's the Barracuda, 
and it's got one propeller, so the green is going to move here. Okay, so that was their turn. Now I could take, I could do a dive. If I wanted to do a dive, what's going to happen is that every uh, of the captain, every one of the captain's boats will always rush to a diving spot unless they occupy a scouting spot. So these two boats would rush right in there. So I'm not going to, uh, well, it just, well, just for purposes of, of uh, showing, let's say that I go ahead and go here, they come in here, I do my dive, all right? Then this would be, I would, I would take my gold or whatever I got, they would take whatever they got. These boats are going to be back here. We flip over the gold. So I wanted to show you a gold card. All that happens with a gold card is that you remove the crew cards in the bottom most spot. That $1 crew card gets discarded. You slide these down. A new one comes out. And if you have to add any gems to the bag, you would do so. So that's really how this is going to work. It's a very simple process. You're going to take your standard actions. You're going to be sailing, resting, diving, hiring crew members, getting your deck built to the way you want it. And the captain is going to be sailing around. They're going to be pretty aggressive in taking dives and they're never going to push their luck. So that's one thing that you need to, to keep in mind is that let's say that they initiated a dive here. Okay. Let's say they initiated a dive here. They would pull from the bag as per normal. So let's say that we're the, the I'm in the red spot, they're in the blue and the gold. All right, so they pull the first one out, it's a black. They would actually stop right there because one more black would bust. And so they're never gonna take that risk. If I had pulled a blue, what they would have done is moved off of that spot to remind you it's been used and they would pull again. But in this case, they're not. So what they're gonna do is they would get their three coins in their treasure chest and then the tie would be removed and they would move on, okay? So when they're initiating a dive, they're never going to push their luck to a place where they can bust. They're always going to stop at the point that the next one could bust them. So that's the basic difference with the rule set. You are going to be scoring your VPs as normal. The captain's going to score the VP from dives as one player, even though they're going to have uh, you know, multiple boats on, on a dive side in almost every occasion. On the last dive of the game, they're always going to rush, even if they occupy a scouting spot. So they're going to try to get as much uh, gold as they can on that last turn. And that's all there is to it. So we'll head back over and I'll give you my final thoughts for the solo game of Deep Blue. Okay, hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea on how the solo variant of Deep Blue plays. So I want to talk about a few things that I tend to look for in solo games and apply them to this particular game. First of all, in solo games, I like to talk about the win conditions. What type of a win condition is in this game? Is it a beat your high score or a win-loss condition? And in Deep Blue, you are playing against an AI opponent, the captain in this case, and all of their boats that are rapidly spreading throughout the, uh, the seas and competing with you on these dives. So this is not a beat your high score variant. You are playing against a, another opponent that's gonna be gathering up gold, placing them in their own treasure chest. And at the end of the game, you're going to open up your treasure chest and see who's got the most gold. Whoever has the most is the winner. And so I do tend to favor those types of solo games. And so I appreciate that Deep Blue has a actual opponent that you are playing against. That I think gives the game the tension that it needs, especially in a push your luck game like this. So a positive for me is that this is a clear win-loss condition. I also like to talk about setup and teardown because oftentimes that can be a big uh, factor on whether you take a game off the shelf and play it as a solo game. And for as large of a game as Deep Blue is, as far as like table space, it takes up a large amount of your table and has a fair amount of components. It's actually a relatively quick setup and teardown. Uh, the, the, the nice insert definitely helps with that, but there's really not a whole lot to do. Setting up that captain's deck is not terribly challenging. It doesn't take you very long. It's really easy to, to determine the difficulty. You just put in a certain number of gold cards. And if you want to make it easier, you put in more gold cards. You want to make it more challenging, you take out more gold cards. So not a problem with the setup and teardown. It's actually quite simple to do, and it doesn't take the amount of time that, that would 
make it feel like you're doing more of that than you are playing the game. So no problems there. Now the rules. The rules are a simple one-page printout. Okay, there's, these are the rules for the solo variant. Now, the base game actually doesn't have a whole lot of rules either. So it's, it's not a terribly complicated game. When, it come, when you come down to it, basically it's a very light deck builder where you're kind of getting more crew members into your deck to allow you to do more things. But it's all really built around a push your luck mechanic. This game boils down to a simple push your luck game. And the solo variant keeps that in. That's one of the things I do like is that it still feels like a regular game of Deep Blue. Not a whole lot changes. It's just that you've got these other ships that you're accounting for that aren't other players. They're the captain. And while you can manipulate the AI a little bit more than you can other players, it still gives you a pretty similar feeling to the game. And so the rules are fine. I didn't have any real issues uh, with ambiguities. There are some priorities that you have to account for, but they're very simple priorities. And uh, there were never a time where it's like, oh, should I go there or there? What's the right one? And they even tell you, if you have a choice, you pick. So I, it, that's not a problem. The rules as written are just fine. So overall solo experience. Now, Deep Blue is a game that I think on its just surface level, no pun intended for a, a, an ocean dwelling game, on its surface level is a very, very light game. Uh, that, it, I feel like that was its design. It, this is not intended to be a, a very deep strategic game. It's built mostly around push your luck. And anytime you've got that amount of luck in a game, you have to understand that that's the type of experience that you're going to get. And so it's nice to have a solo game that has that push your luck mechanic. There's not too many. I mean, there are, there are solo push your luck games, don't get me wrong, but there's not that many that have the same type of feel. And so I do appreciate that. The complexity of the game being as low as it is makes me feel like I would not get this game strictly as a solo game, okay? Um, if I already had Deep Blue or if it already appealed to me as a game that I might want to play with other players, sure, I might break out this Captain's Return scenario a couple few times and play it if I was just in the mood to do a little bit of push your luck with some really pretty components. But honestly, I don't see myself coming back to this game very much. And it is certainly not a game that I would buy strictly as a solo experience. I just, I don't think there's enough there uh, to, to get it just for that. It's a game that I think does better when you've got other people that you can kind of have that talking to, the, the pulling into the bag. That's part of the appeal of these types of games. Where, where everyone is kind of rooting for a certain thing to come out of the bag. In this game, you're still kind of hoping for things, but you don't have that interaction with the other people that really build up the suspension and the, and the, and the tension that you get in a, in a really good push or luck game. So Deep Blue is one that I think is okay. It's fine once in a while, once in a great moon, I might want to play it as a solo game, but I certainly wouldn't choose this over other solo games that fulfill a, a similar weight or time uh, to play that this one does. And so if you already have Deep Blue, you're interested in giving it a shot, sure, give it a shot, see what you think. But I would not recommend this as a solo purchase because I just don't think there's enough there. As a solo game, I'm gonna rate it a six out of 10. It's nice, it's fine, but it's not something that I would go out of my way to uh, pick up. So thank you so much for your time as always and have a great day.